I first discovered Good Morning Monster through Glennon Doyle. She came on our podcast. We flew out to Miami to interview her and I asked her what she was reading. I was so inspired by her books and I knew whatever she was reading would be incredible. And she told me she was reading this book, Good Morning Monster. So I immediately bought it and I could not put it down. I was so inspired and just excited to read the book that I immediately told Michael that it needed to be a Netflix series. And finally, he brought the idea to his team who was so on board at Dear Media and they've just executed it so beautifully. And I recommend this book to every single person. It's such a good book. Essentially, it's about five different people and their trauma and dealing with their trauma in therapy. I'm an advocate for doing whatever the fuck you wanna do and whatever works for you. If therapy is something that works for you, I think you should totally do it. I think that a lot goes in to committing to therapy. I think it's important to find someone that you have chemistry with. I also think it's important to find a therapist who holds you accountable. And I also think it's important to find a therapist that specializes in whatever you need. I'm also an advocate for platforms like BetterHelp where you can get therapy from your house. I think that's amazing. A lot of people don't wanna leave their house. They also have anxiety going to an office. So to be able to do it from the comfort of your own home is incredible. And also some people just don't want to be face to face or on video. They want to do a phone call. So I'm an advocate of having therapy as a tool in your toolbox. I've gone to therapy off and on. For me, to be honest, it hasn't been a priority. I have two children and I'm running a business and I just haven't made it a priority. And I'm the type of person that if I'm going to commit to something, I want to be able to give 100%. I'm not counting out therapy in my future. I just think right now in this moment, I can't commit 100%. I try to sort of find therapy within myself right now. And I think it's about carving out those moments in the day of when you can find space for yourself. For me, the best therapy is when I'm quiet and my mind is quiet and I'm sitting with my own thoughts. That's really therapeutic for me. It's actually more therapeutic than even talking with someone. I like to just sit and think in silence. Yeah, my mental health journey is something that I've talked about a lot on the podcast. I've never dealt with diagnosed depression and I've never dealt with diagnosed anxiety. So I'm probably not the best person to speak on it. The closest I've ever been to struggling with my mental health, and I've talked about this a lot, was after having Zaza. I felt like I was run over by a Mack truck. And I think looking back, the reason it was so jarring is because no one talked enough about after having the baby. It was more of a focus on being pregnant. I didn't have any tools with my first child. I didn't know that I should be prioritizing my wellness. I wasn't putting enough of an emphasis on it. And I felt so low after having her. Uh, and it had nothing to do with her. It had nothing to do with my husband. It just was this moment where COVID was happening and quarantine and I just didn't have access to what I should have had access to. And I think with my second child, I experienced none of that. And it's because I was prepared. So I think going into being pregnant and preparing for the mental health drop that you have after you have a kid is really important. And that's, you know, anything from setting up help to finding out the right minerals and nutrients and vitamins you should take if you're breastfeeding, to getting out in the sun, to taking walks, to having a date night with your significant other. I just think women need to be set up to understand that everyone says, oh my God, you should be so happy you have a baby. You can simultaneously feel really low and also be so grateful that you have a baby. Other than that, I have not experienced a lot of anxiety or depression, maybe anxious moments, but I think a really great person to talk with about anxiety and depression is Kathy, which is why I'm so excited to share her book and have her on the podcast. I relate to Madeline because she's very cold with her approach sometimes in business. And I think sometimes I can be like that. And I've had to work on that. I think that she's very curt and to the point and she thinks it, she's being direct, but I think sometimes it can come off wrong. I can be similar sometimes. I can be super direct. So I'm constantly working on that. It's a finesse. 
I also relate to her because she's sort of a workaholic. That's another thing that I need to work on. I can be so immersed in work that I don't create boundaries around it. And that's something that I've really had to learn over the last 13 years. It's like I used to say yes to everything. And now I'm learning that no is actually what I need to be doing. And you can tell that she is totally wrapped up in her work world. It's almost like she wears it as a badge of identity. So I relate to that. I don't relate to her relationship with her mother. She had a horrible relationship with her mother. Her mother was really awful. And when you read the book, you will not believe the way her mother spoke to her and the things she did to her. It's honestly mind blowing. And I had a lot of empathy for her throughout that. Madeline's a complex character. You guys gotta listen to the series to find out all things Madeline, because she's a good one.